Thanks for joining us. I'm J.R. Resnick. And I'm Chris Sorensen. This is North Florida Weekly. The first ever weekly newscast from the University of North Florida's new high-tech, all-high-definition studio. The dust has finally settled on the planned Koran burning a couple of weeks ago, but many questions surrounding it still haven't been answered. How is it that a small protest from a small church in a relatively small town created such an uproar around the world? That uproar included protest abroad and warning from the President of the United States. It's a reflection of our age of instant communication, where not just the traditional news media, but anyone can reach millions with a couple of keystrokes. Protesters marched and shouted. Police lie in the streets. Barricades surrounded the church's perimeter. Even frightened neighbors locked their doors. All this commotion took place in front of the Dove World Outreach Center on the ninth anniversary of September 11th. No justice, no peace, no war in the Middle East. The media's exposure of the rally attracted protesters from all over. This is my neighborhood. This is where I live. I live three hours away. We live in St. Petersburg, the Tampa Bay area. Their purpose, the same. I kind of honestly feel like it's lowering my property value. But we are here to stand for peace. People stood up in Gainesville, all around the world, all across the United States, and they congregated here at this one point today to, to say no to hatred, bigotry, and Islamophobia. This event was quick to get the media's attention, even drew reactions worldwide. He was particularly savvy about how to manipulate the media. Marsha Leidendorf, a former CNN anchor and current UNF professor, says Jones got his message across loud and clear. We're kind of um, losing our way and our focus, and as a result, we end up making a big hoopla over somebody years ago, probably would have maybe gotten some local coverage, but certainly wouldn't have gotten national coverage and wouldn't have been able to ride the wave of the mess that he created. It's not just about credibility. The, the media outlet that's going to handle it in an ethical, responsible manner is probably going to lose out to the competition and as a result won't get as many papers sold or won't get as many hits on the internet or won't get as many viewers to their newscast and the result is, is that they'll lose money. Leidendorf says advances in technology have been key to staying connected but responsibilities may get lost in the process. The internet is a really good tool, but this went out all over the place and there was no controlling it. There was no careful consideration of the ramifications of covering a story like this. And it's just the way that our world is and we're gonna have to deal with it and come up with some guidelines and come up with some serious conversation. I'm not sure we can because we're so tied into this rush, 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 hurry, 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 beat the other guy. Earlier this week, Gainesville authorities slapped a $200,000 bill on Jones. City officials say that's how much it costs to provide security at the church. Listen up, students. If your grades are falling, you might want to hit the books more and Facebook less. A recent study finds that students who are distracted by the lore of Facebook are more likely to drop a whole letter grade. British researchers say that the young people are multitaskers, which can take their attention away from studying. Getting a good education is something that's been pounded into most of us almost from day one. With that education, you'll be able to get, off, get a good job. But a lot of times, that good education doesn't come cheap. Oftentimes, it can run thousands of dollars. Shin and Mackie met with this one woman who was working to pay off her student loans one month at a time. This is Celeste Radke. She works full-time as a bank teller. She recently graduated from college and is now facing having to pay back her student loans. I have probably about 15000 in loans, um, but the monthly payment really, it's only one twenty-five for me, so it's really not that difficult for me to pay it every single month. I just make sure that's the first bill, you know, before anything, before going out to eat, before any, like, miscellaneous bills. That's the most important one. Radke says she's thankful she was able to find a job after graduating, but that's not always the case. My husband, he has a lot more loans than I do, and there was a time where he was unemployed, so he couldn't pay them back right away, and we're dealing with that now because we're, we want to buy a house, you know, in the future. So there is, you know, that does show up on his credit, and it shows up as a bad thing because it went into delinquency. A new study shows that student loan debt is actually surpassing credit card debt in America. Ariane Israel says that's because students are using loans for more than just tuition. 
and a lot of us use it as a means to survive because I don't live on campus so that's helping pay my for me it's helping pay my bills and gas and food and if I have extra get some clothes just do something for myself so it's really just like cash right there just a cash advance that means more student loan debt than ever before the total more than 800 billion dollars but not all students have to worry about paying their loans back after graduation Ever since I was like, I want to say middle school, my parents started um, starting a prepaid college plan. So I also have Florida Right Features, which pays for roughly 75% of my tuition. So together they balance out, so I don't have any loans to pay. Especially when you're not sure you can find a job after graduation. I think people don't want to be taking out so many loans right now because they're going to have to pay it back and it's going to be tougher to pay it back in the long run. And that's what economists say is happening. Economists estimate that the student loan default rate is the highest it's been in more than 10 years. Shannon Mackey, North Florida Weekly. Federal officials have come up with a plan to help students pay back their loans. It's called income-based repayment. It basically means that the monthly payments will be capped at an amount that is affordable based on your income and family size. UNF Schools School of Engineering received a big payout. In fact, it's the largest the university has ever received for a technolo technology-based, rather. Uh, Courtney Spencer reports. UNF School of Engineering received over $9 million to help further fuel cell research. The United States Army contributed $3.2 million and the United States Department of Energy provided $2.5 million. Dimitri Bamba is one of many working hard to produce the new technology. All of us are interested in the fuel cells technology, which is a very promising technology for portable devices, electronic devices. Mechanical engineering professor Dr. Fletcher operates the research laboratory and is principal advisor of the contracts. Dr. Fletcher told the Department of Media Relations and Events that the research funds will attract research faculty, reaching faculty and students who might not otherwise come to UNF. Researcher Brian Major has been a key factor in the research for nearly two years. Uh, we, a lot of us are grad students, uh, just uh, TAs and grad students performing research towards their thesis. We've been researching for a while. Uh, we're just now to the point to uh, send some deliverables. The research indicates that laptops using methanol fuel cells can last 10 times longer than those using regular batteries. The fund specifically allowed development and commercialization of two kinds of laptops, one to be used by American soldiers in battle and the other to be used by the average customer. UNF researchers say their technology will make laptops completely wireless. This means never having to plug it in again. Courtney Spencer, North Florida Weekly. The research project will allow UNF to license with commercial businesses. That means they will be able to sell their new batteries to the public. After the break, you'll get the U.S. military's take and all the recent news about it's don't ask, don't tell policy. Later on, you'll get the first ride aboard the Sports Express. And always eat your vegetables or at least have them on hand. You'll find out which veggie in particular saved a woman's life. We'll be right back. Hi, Ms. Robbins. How are you? I remember when she was born. It's so good to see her happy. I was worried at first. Her mama was so young. It was just too hard on her when that baby came. I told her mama I would watch the baby so she could go to the grocery store, but just take a few moments to herself. I still do it today. It doesn't take much of my time. And her mama said it was such a big help. <laughs> It's your turn to raise the leaders of tomorrow. Find out how at ounce.org. Yeah, but did you see how much he had to drink last night? I can't believe that guy made it home. Nobody drives drunk anymore. Hold on, I got another call coming in. While drunk driving rates have dropped greatly, negligent driving and speeding fatalities have skyrocketed. Someone dies every 13 minutes from negligent driving, so keep your hands on the wheel, your eyes on the road, and your phone put away. 
My name is Brian Wilson, and I'm a nursing student here at the University of North Florida in Jacksonville. The nursing program here at UNF is top notch. They give us a firm foundation so that when we're out in the field and actually graduate and pass our boards, you feel well prepared. I'm a nursing student, but I'm also active duty, and I'm participating in the Navy Seaman Admiral 21 Officer Commissioning Program. And a lot of the skills they teach us there, like leadership, time management, and teamwork, it's stuff I can apply to the nursing program. UNF, no one like you, no place like this. I got laid off. Bills were piling up. Everything was falling apart. At the same time, Sarah started having trouble in school. It was horrible. Our friends at church tried to help, but I just didn't like telling them how bad things were. The lady who cuts my hair told me about the parent helpline. The helpline got us into a parenting group. It helped me find a new job. I'm so glad we found out about the helpline. And I'm so glad we made the call. It's your turn to raise the leaders of tomorrow. Find out how at ounce.org.